Tonight in 1962, a man named Tony Lip Vallelonga is working in one of the biggest nightclubs in New York City. Tony works as a waitress as well as a security officer. While on guard, Tony saw the head of a famous gangster in New York City enter and leave his favorite hat in the luggage storage. Because the conditions for entering the club are not wearing a hat. He loved his hat so much, he even threatened to burn the club if he lost it. From a distance, Tony who heard the threat then got an evil idea. When the gangster chief wants to go home and ask for his hat again, he gets angry when the custodian says that his hat has been lost. The head of the gangster again threatened to burn the club if until tomorrow the club still had not found his hat. Hearing the threat, the club owner was forced to temporarily close the club until this problem is resolved. Tony feels guilty and then goes to meet the gangster chief. Tony then returns his hat and tells that he snatched the hat from a thief but the thief managed to escape. Tony then asks the gangster leader to forgive the owner of the club where he works. The gangster leader who thinks Tony is a hero, as a thank you he then gives Tony money. Morning, Tony came home to change clothes and sleep. There he lived with his wife named Dolores and their two children. In the afternoon when he woke up, Tony saw Dolores making drinks for two black plumbers who were repairing the faucet in his house. After the two black craftsmen left, Tony immediately threw away their used glasses because he found them disgusting. In 1962, racism in America was still very severe and there was no law on human equality and white people still considered black people to be inferior to them including Tony. Tony also doesn't want to have to drink from a black man's glass. Now the club where Tony works is still closed because the club owner is traumatized by the threat from the gangster leader yesterday. Tony is officially unemployed. That afternoon, Tony got a call from his friend. Tony's friend offers a job to be the personal chauffeur of a famous pianist named Dr. Don Shirley or commonly called Doc. Hearing the offer, Tony was interested and then asked for the Doc's home address. Next morning, Tony came to the Doc's house. When they meet, Tony looks confused. It turns out Doc is a black man with a strange style and attitude. At that time the Doc wore a bright yellow shirt with a gold necklace and then sat on a throne like a king. The Doc informed him that he was planning an eight-week tour of America. That's why he needs a driver as well as someone who can take care of his travel schedule who can wash and iron his clothes at a salary of $100 per week. But Tony refused. He didn't want to be a black servant. Tony's principles are very strong. He is a person who sticks to his principles no matter what happens. But when the doc raised his salary to $125 per week, Tony immediately agreed. The day of the tour has arrived. The doc management then gave Tony the car keys. They also gave a book called Green Book. The book contained recommended restaurant routes and a list of lodgings that allowed blacks to enter. And Tony's job as a driver begins. Along the way, Tony was annoyed that the doc always forbade him, starting from eating while driving, smoking, and talking. Tony didn't like black people from the start. Now his hatred has grown many times bigger because of Doc. They arrived in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the evening for their first tour. Doak and two of his musical accompaniments performed in front of white people. Please welcome the Don Shirley Trio. In the show, Tony was amazed and did not expect lowly black people to play the piano so well. On the next tour, Tony took the time to check out the piano the Doc would use in tonight's show. Tony saw the condition of the piano was very dirty. Tony then asked one of the officers to replace the piano. But the officer refused. He said that dirty piano is suitable for black people like Doc. Hearing the officer's words, Tony was annoyed and then immediately hit him. <laughs> After the show, the two of them went to the next town. As usual Tony was amazed watching the piano playing Doc. In his admiration, Tony began to think why the Doc wants to appear to entertain white people when they always look down on him. The next day on the next tour, the Doc was well received by white visitors. Different from the previous tour. After performing one song, the doc asked for a break. When the doc wanted to go to the bathroom, the committee forbade him to use the toilet and ordered the doc to use a special toilet for black people. Doc feels insulted. He then took Tony home briefly to the and just to pee. When he returned to the show, Tony was confused as to why the doc could smile greeting white people without looking hurt. One of the musicians later informed that this was not the first time the doc had been humiliated. Doc is used to it. It can even be said that he has been trained to withstand insults. He also asked Tony to be prepared because in the future there will definitely be racist treatment that is worse than this. The next day Tony took the time to write a letter to his wife. When the doc reads it, he says that Tony's writing is bad. Doc then helps rewrite it with the words doc put together which is very romantic. From that moment the two of them began to close. When Tony's letter arrived, Dolores was touched to read it. The next day, Tony and the doc arrived at one of the Memphis City hotels. While going inside, Tony happened to meet two of his friends who saw Tony working for black people. His friends were confused because they thought Tony was short of money. One of his friends then offered Tony a job. But Tony politely declined the offer. In the evening, Tony gets a call from his friend. On the phone Tony was asked to meet them at the bar. When he left the room, it turned out that the doc was also outside. Because doc thinks Tony plans to take a job from his friend, 
Doc then doubles Tony's salary if Tony stays as his assistant. Tony then tries to calm the Doc. He assures the Doc that currently Tony will only work with the Doc until the tour is over and promises that he will not accept job offers from other places even if they are offered high pay. Tony said if he wanted to meet his friend it was just to hang out. Hearing Tony's words, the Doc felt calm. After returning from the bar, Tony invited the Doc to chat in the hotel lobby. There, Doc told him how he started to become the famous pianist he is now. Once when he was playing the piano in a bar, a white pianist liked his playing. The pianist then gave him a doc job at a record company to play classical music, which is the original white music of white people. Since then, the doc has continued to play classical music. Tony then advised the doc to try playing the music he wanted, namely jazz. He tells them that what they really like about the doc show is not the classical music, but because they love to see the doc play the piano. For Tony, doc's piano playing is amazing. Hearing all the support from Tony, Doc was happy but after all he's been contracted to play classical music. After the show in the city of Memphis, the two of them continued their tour to the next city. But on the way, Tony's car was stopped by two police officers. One of the cops then told Tony to get out. The police then continued to interrogate Tony. The police consider Doc a fugitive because he is black and thinks Tony is an accomplice. Tony became angry and he immediately hit the policeman. They were both arrested and put in prison. Inside the police station, Doc tries to ask why he was also imprisoned even though he didn't do anything wrong. But none of the police are willing to answer the question Doc. Annoyed, Doc then threatened to sue the police if he wasn't allowed to call his lawyer. Hearing the threat, the police finally allowed to call. Not long after, the police chief was seen answering a phone call from someone with a frightened face. He keeps apologizing and promises to release Doc soon. Seeing the police chief terrified, Tony wonders who exactly the person the Doc is contacting is. After being free they return to continue their journey. Doc then told him that due to Tony's behavior, he had to ask for help from the younger brother of the United States president who is currently serving on the board of the attorney general's office just to release them both from prison. Hearing the story, instead of apologizing, Tony laughed. At first it all sounded like normal chatter until Tony said that Doc was a sultan with lots of wealth living in a luxurious house and having a perfect life. Immediately the Doc got angry and then got out of Tony's car. The confused Tony then rushed after him. With emotion Doc said that Tony did not know anything about his life. Even though he lives in a luxurious house, he feels alone all this time. Dog was imprisoned by white people who had paid him to entertain them. They do respect the Doc on stage. But when the concert ended, all the white people again treated Doc the same way they insulted other black people. Doc is lonely and no white person wants to be his friend even black people also stay away from him because they think that Doc's nature is similar to white people. Doc has always been alone, without friends and without family, without relatives. Hearing the outpouring of the pianist's heart, Tony could only be silent. All this time he was jealous. Why can a lowly black person like Doc have a lot of money when his job is only to play the piano? While Tony had to work hard to support his family. From the Doc story, Tony realizes that no matter how high a position or how much wealth black people have, their lives are still much harder than Tony's. After being satisfied with venting his heart, Doc returns to the car. The two of them then continued their journey. They arrived at the final destination of the tour which is an elite restaurant in the Birmingham city. There again the Doc gets racist treatment. The restaurant manager gave him a waiting room in the warehouse near the kitchen while the two musical accompaniments provided a luxurious private waiting room. Seeing that treatment, Tony could only be silent. Inside the restaurant while Tony was having dinner, two doc musicians came and sat with Tony. One of the musicians then said that actually without the need to tour America, doc already has a lot of money. The reason why he made this tour is to open the hearts of the whole community that black people deserve to be recognized and treated as equals. Not long after, the doc followed into the restaurant. When the doc wanted to join them, he was chased out by the maids. The waiter explained that black people were not allowed in here. Tony then tried to negotiate with the restaurant manager to allow the dinner doc in the restaurant just once. But the manager still won't allow it and as an apology, the manager will prepare a table in the back garden so the doc can have dinner there. Doc then refuses and threatens to cancel his concert at the restaurant if he is not allowed to have dinner with other white people. Hearing the doc's threat, the manager then asked Tony to talk one-on-one. -on -one. He's trying to bribe Tony into coaxing doc to have dinner out. To him allowing a black man to eat in a restaurant was like allowing the monkey to eat a banana on a golden plate. Just as Tony was about to hit the manager, the doc came over and told him to stop. Doc says this time he will take Tony's advice. If Tony wants to see him perform, the doc is willing to eat out. But if Tony doesn't want to, then doc will cancel his last tour concert. Heard that Tony was very sad. He finally realized how difficult the life he had been living. After considering everything, Tony decided to leave and cancel their last concert tour. On the way home, the doc takes Tony to dinner at a black bar. After dinner, a waiter asked why they were both wearing suits when they only wanted to eat. Tony then explains that Doc is a famous pianist. He should be performing at a fancy restaurant by now. 
but he prefers to eat at this bar because the food there is not delicious. Hearing his little bar being praised, the waiter was flattered and then asked the doc to play the piano and entertain all the patrons in exchange for the meal. Everyone seemed to really like the doc's appearance, even the band members at the bar invited them to a duet with him. And for the first time in his life doc felt what it was like to have fun without having to fake a smile. Finished having fun doc and Tony then went home. On this Christmas Eve, there are many good things that change the way they both view the meaning of life. On the way there was a blizzard. When Tony wants to find a nearby lodging for the doc, the doc refuses and says that Tony must be home tonight to celebrate Christmas with his family. The doc then drove in Tony's place. After a long journey, the two of them finally arrived in front of Tony's house. Tony then invites the doc to go inside to meet his family. But doc is aware that he is a black person. His presence would surely make Tony's family feel uncomfortable. Doc then choose to go from there. When he got home, Doc went back to living his life as before. Lonely life without family, without friends, without best friends. He suddenly remembered Tony's words that the Doc had a choice. He is free to do whatever he likes even if it's just a small thing. While at Tony's house, while they were having dinner with his family, Tony heard a knock on the door. When it opened it turned out that Tony's friend had come to visit. And when Tony wanted to close the door, he was surprised to see the Doc was outside. Tony was so happy that his best friend had finally come. He then introduced the doc to his family and unexpectedly Tony's whole family was able to warmly welcome the doc's presence. His family is sure that doc must be a good person because he has succeeded in changing Tony, who used to hate black people now. Instead, he can actually be good friends with doc. Tony's wife then hugged doc while thanking him for helping Tony write a love letter for him. Now the doc goal has been achieved. He managed to change the hearts of white people even if only Tony's family.